My name is Richard Crawford, and I've built my career on representing luxury brands around the world. And in doing so, I've had the privilege of having some truly out of the ordinary experiences. But at what cost? It's getting harder and harder to blindly ignore the impact our extravagant lifestyle is having on the planet and its people. So I've decided to investigate whether there really is a sustainable way to visit the wonders of the world, but still have extraordinary luxury. Can I have globetrotting adventures without leaving a significant footprint? Well, let's find out. And by using the basic principles that define ecotourism, which are minimal impact, sustainability, social responsibility, and of course, let's not forget overall guest experience, I will rate my travels around the planet to see if we really can make a difference. <laughs> this trip takes me to Thailand, where I'll be visiting the Suniva organization on the island of Koh Kut. And Suniva have built an enviable reputation as leaders in the field of intelligent luxury, or as we might call it, sustainable luxury tourism. Now forget the fact that they have built the resort out of all natural materials, that they recycle almost everything, so they have a zero carbon footprint, and they have a foundation that supports underprivileged communities globally, Rumor has it they have a 24-hour chocolate room and a homemade ice cream parlor. Now that is really what I want to see. I hate my job. And from what I hear, this really is one organization that leaves no trace. Thailand is one of the world's most renowned holiday destinations with an incredible range of things to see and do. Its beaches and islands are famous for their beauty and uniqueness. However, over-tourism is a serious problem. In 2018, one of its most famous beaches, Maya Bay, was closed to tourists for three years due to the severe damage caused by visitors. Tourism is Thailand's lifeline, but it's also its greatest challenge, especially when it comes to protecting the environment. Twenty-eight hours of international flights, and we're finally here, Bangkok. And to be honest, that's about as much as I know right now, except for the fact that we're heading to a small island in the Thai Gulf. Now, I was told when I got here that I should be looking for what I thought was an airline called Arn Fin. And after about twenty minutes of searching around a pretty big airport and making a few phone calls, I've discovered that Arn Fin is not an airline. Arn Fin is a person. And oh, Suniva Kiri, perfect, I'm at the right place. How are you, Hi, my friend? Richard. I'm Arn Finn Oynes. You're Arn Finn. So this is Arn Finn. Arn Finn is not an airline, but you should open one up. Yeah, I should do that. I was very impressed that the Suniva experience began with boarding their very own private plane. Although I was a little worried how an aircraft fitted in a Suniva's eco model. So I asked Arn Finn, and I was pleasantly surprised by his answer. So we've just turned up over the water towards the island. And I got to thinking, you know, these flights are on a daily basis and sometimes multiple times a day. What effect would that have on the environment? But fortunately, Suniva have a carbon offset program that not only offsets the carbon of the flights from Bangkok to the resort, but offsets the carbon from where each guest originated. So in my case, all the way from New York. So that in itself is incredible. Now also, for safety reasons, we can't have glass on the plane but these bottles although they, although they look like plastic are actually made from plants and are very biodegradable and, and eco-friendly and for me that's a really good sign of what's to come so here we are arrived at the resort's very own private airport which is literally a little strip of a runway in the middle of a tiny neighboring island now i'm no robinson crusoe but i have my very own 
Miss Friday, how are you? Who will um, look after me, be a personal butler for the whole duration of my stay here. And we're not quite there yet. We still have one more little leg of the journey to go. And that's our own little private speedboat over to the resort. So, woohoo, onward. Thank you, Miss Friday. Thank you. My mom always told me if you're going to do something, do it in style. Hey! What a welcome that is. The whole island is about Yeah. Woo! Wow, I'm a little intimidated. I'm just a little bit intimidated. I have... Guys, how are you? Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you guys. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful, what a welcome. Fantastic. Well, welcome to Sunavakiri. Well, thank you very much. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, thank you. Now, here we are one hour ahead of Bangkok, and we are on Suneva time. Suneva time. What, like, literally one hour ahead? One hour ahead. What, what, is that, uh, is that via Greenwich Mean Time, or is that...? It is to get uh, more out of the day, uh, so they enjoy the stay here. So this is, so Suneva time is just something you guys put together? It's something So that. that the guests could have extra daylight and extra hours on the island? Absolutely. Hey, you know what? A place as beautiful as this, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so here we are on the island of Kokud and the Thai Gulf visiting the Suneva Kiri Resort. And yes, we just had to open up with the quintessential paradise shot. Crystal clear blue waters, pristine white sand, green palm trees. Are you happy now? Okay, good. Let's move on. The whole reason that I'm here, apart from the fact that I want to live down here forever, is that I wanted to find out how you open up somewhere like this to tourism, but still keep it pristine. And that's an actual fact, a priority for the people at Suniva. But before we get into Suniva's eco-philosophies, I thought I'd have a look around the property. And let's start off by looking at one of their villas. Oh, and by the way, I am moving down here. Welcome to villa number 63. Now, Arnfin tells me that I've never seen anything like this before, which is a pretty bold statement because we've actually seen some pretty impressive penthouses on our travels. So let's go check it out. And See if it lives up to its reputation. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about Villa 63. Now, as well as the six rooms that I mentioned before, it starts with this expansive communal space. But it doesn't stop there. It also has a billiard room, a gym, and I don't mean a resort gym, but a personal gym in the villa with a ping pong table, an enormous office with meeting space, its own massage parlor, and in a place like this, a mini bar just wouldn't be enough. So what do you have? A walk-in refrigerated mini bar. Ooh, I think I have one of those. And a home theater with projector and bathroom facilities. And of course, all leading out to this enormous deck. I do have to say, there's an abundance of entertaining space. So much so, you could probably get lost. And it all centers around this massive infinity pool. But what I want to show you now is some of the accommodation. And this is a master suite, very eloquently furnished um, with buffalo hide and using a lot of furniture that had the style of the old travel trunks. But a really unique feature that I like is that this case lid lifts up and has the TV. Now they have a saying here on the resort, no shoes and no news. There's no actual TV channels fed into this TV. It's just through a DVD player. But why would you want that when you have an incredible view? Now, if you think the master suite 
is good. Wait till you see the bathroom facilities. Now these facilities are pretty impressive. So let's take a little walk through. We'll start off with the toilet itself. Now most hotels have a room with a toilet, but here the toilet has a whole building. So the commode is right in here with a little changing area out here. Now for the naturalist in us, we have an, an outdoor shower. Um, and true to uh, Suniva philosophy, all of the bottles are glass and filled with local made products. Now a place like this, wouldn't be a place like this if it didn't have a hot tub jacuzzi and what better place to put one than outdoors on the deck. And of course, if you don't want to take an outdoor shower, they also have a glass enclosed indoor shower, which also, by the way, doubles as a steam room. And just to cap all this off, we have a his and hers changing room. And to be honest, I think if I got up during the night to go to the bathroom, I would be completely lost. And just upstairs from the master suite is the kids room. And what kids don't love bunk beds. But if the bunk beds are not enough, there's this. A water slide that delivers you right into the plunge pool at the master suite. I guess it's time to go see mom and dad. Woo! Okay, I'm moving in. And you can't stop me. Good morning. And the sun is rising over the Thai Gulf and I'm excited to discover more about Suniva Kiri today. And my first stop is what I'm told is a very unique dining experience. Here at Suniva Kiri, it's about creating a lifetime of rare experiences. And I'm heading to breakfast this morning and I'm told that this is going to be one of those. Now I'm walking through this dense jungle and to be honest, I really don't know what to expect, but I am building up a good appetite. Oh wow, this is really cool. Certainly unique and rare. I guess I'm gonna have breakfast in the trees. Fantastic. Okay. Oh wow, okay, okay. <laughs> it just got interesting. Where am I going? So I guess when they said I was gonna have breakfast in the canopy, they really meant in the canopy. Here comes breakfast. Breakfast is served. <laughs> Oh wow, everything, everything. We got eggs, salmon, fruit, cheese, meat. It's a full breakfast, they weren't kidding. This is a tree pod dining experience, available for breakfast, lunch and dinner and seats for people. And it's quite literally a pod that has been hoisted up via cables to the top of a tree. Now, you pre-order your food and it is brought to you by a waiter on a zip line. Well, I have to say, if they set out to create a unique and rare dining experience, mission accomplished and very often they're featured as one of the top 10 dining experiences in the world and I never thought I'd be hanging in a pod at the top of a tree with such a beautiful view. If a six bedroom villa and treetop dining is not enough to make you want to come here then I have a couple of other things that will surely seal the deal. Never ever ever have I stayed anywhere where well, there's a 24 hour, refrigerated, all you can eat, self-service chocolate room. I mean, it's literally like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in here. And they have everything. They have chocolates, chocolate eggs, chocolate milk, different flavors, dipping chocolate macarons. And to be honest, it's really unfair because chocolate happens to be my biggest weakness, but I'll be a professional. Now, of course, all the chocolates made on property um, and it's all fair trade chocolate. And if all you can eat chocolate is not enough for you, then 
There's something else I want to show you. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. I got a little distracted. So anyway, yes, they also have an all-you-can-eat ice cream parlor. And of course, as you would expect, everything's made on property. Hmm. I would like to order the coconut ice cream, please. Thank you. Well, with over 40 flavors and all of these toppings, what more could you want? I hate my job. Considering we're smack bang in the middle of a tropical paradise island, Suniva offers many wildlife excursions. And I'm here with my guide, Tom. And Tom, what are we going to get into today? Today we're going to take you to seeing the nature and waterfall and seeing kind of big tree, big banyan tree. The banyan trees are really impressive. And it's interesting to note that these trees are in fact epiphytes, which is a plant that grows on another plant. And they actually grow their roots from the top to the bottom. Now the orange material you see wrapped around this particular tree is a local tribute to Buddha. And so began our trek to the beautiful Yaki waterfall, one of the three waterfalls on the island. This one was recommended by my guide because not only could I enjoy a refreshing swim in the natural pool, but I could have my skin exfoliated by the therapeutic Gara Rufa fish. Oh wow, wow that's incredible, Whew. that's beautiful. Now. That was well worth the hike. Tom, can I get in? Yes, sure. I can? I can get in and swim? Sure. Can I, can I jump off? Of course, we can escape. So that's a case of be careful what you wish for. <laughs> go, let's go. What a treat, and surprisingly pristine, and more importantly, not too overcrowded with tourists. To be honest, all that's missing at this point is a nice glass of wine. Speaking of which... As with any luxury resort, the food and beverage program is very important, and here at Sanibakiri is no exception. In fact, they've almost taken their beverage program one step further and built this amazing wine pavilion which is basically a wine tasting room with one of the best views in the world also they have their very own wine cellar which you can actually see right below this glass table let's go check it out wow this is really cool and what's really neat is for a resort in such a remote island they were recognized in 2013 by wine spectator as having one of the best restaurant wine lists in the world. And a nice little feature too is that this pool in here provides a natural humidity. It's not unusual for resorts of this caliber to have vegetable gardens. What is unusual is to have it on this kind of scale. I mean, this is like a Garden of Eden. Uh, and of course, being Suniva, it is all organic, which guarantees not just freshness, but great taste. I sat down with Chef Dawa to find out the benefits of using the fresh island produce. And we have, we have a lot of uh, big gardens, vegetables gardens, so we can grow our own vegetables from here. And um, instead of buying from another places, uh, 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 yeah, another shops that we, we can grow here. And it's more nicer and more healthy. Uh, like uh, now we are doing the own mushrooms here. We are growing on mushrooms. This is actually the only door that I've seen with any kind of lock here on the property and it just so happens to be to the mushroom hut which makes me question what kind of mushrooms they got in there let's go have a look so it's actually a place where they, they bring in the spores of the mushrooms and and grow them here until full maturity and just really another example of full sustainability part of the philosophy here is that they provide organic fresh and really healthy food and one of the dining options here is this pop-up raw bar. And let me tell you, the aromas that are coming off of here and the vibrant colors makes this really, really appetizing. 
and they're preparing for as a six course menu which I'm really looking forward to. Is this mine? Thank you. And to top the day off, I visit Cinema Paradiso, the property's very own outdoor cinema. Now, Cinema Paradiso marries three passions close to Cineva's heart. Elegance, immersion in nature, and relaxed indulgence. And the cinema offers a full bar and waiter service with gourmet foods accompanied by a nice selection of cocktails. What better way to finish the day than to watch your own private viewing of a movie on an inflatable screen under the moonlight to top it all off, they even supply the popcorn. Welcome back to the island of Kolkut in Thailand, where I'm visiting Suniva Kiri. Whereas I expected the food to be good here, I didn't expect such a big focus on locally produced sustainable foods. For instance, no lobster is served at the resort due to concerns of overfishing. Now, you'd imagine this would create a real challenge for the chefs to come up with world-class cuisine using only local produce. But this seems to have actually become a point of pride here. The signature restaurant is held by Chef Benz, who has become iconic worldwide for the quality of her dining experience. The signature restaurant at Suniva Kiri is Ben's restaurant, named after my good friend here, Chef Ben's, and tonight we're gonna to have dinner there. But I'm really fortunate today because Chef Ben's has invited me down to the local market where she'll get some of the produce for tonight's menu. This is a perfect example of how Suniva gives back to the local community and let's be honest, it doesn't get any fresher than this. Chef Ben's actually has a really interesting story. Basically, several years ago, the owners of Suniva had dined at a restaurant where Chef Ben's had prepared some of the meals. They enjoyed it so much, they basically hired her on the spot. Um, several years later, they've actually built the Ben's restaurant here at Suniva Kiri, uh, and obviously Chef Ben's being the chef there. Now, Chef Ben's uses recipes that have been handed down through her family for generations. And now we're actually going to go and prepare some of the produce that we bought today. So I guess, guys, tonight we have a, a dinner date. I'll see you there. Restaurant Ben's is a little unusual in a couple of ways. Firstly, there is no menu as such. Chef Ben's just cooks what's fresh that day. Also, it's located completely separately from the main Suniva property. And the only real way to get there is via boat. And you know what? That's perfectly fine with me. So here we are, finally, at the Ben's restaurant. Um, and I have to say, just getting here was a beautiful experience, coming through the mangroves. Now, there are some people who have been quoted as saying that this is the best Thai food in the world. So let's go see if it lives up to the hype. There's no set menu at the restaurant. Uh, and what you eat at night is based on what Chef Benz decides that day when she's at the market and fix, picks up all the fresh produce. So what are we having tonight, Chef yeah, Benz? For the prawn today, I make for the soup. Yeah, prawn, prawn soup, soup? Yeah, okay. With ball. Then for the crab, I make a wok fry with curry. With yeah. curry the curry crab, the crabs that we met today? Yeah. Looking forward to that. We're starting dinner off tonight with the signature drink from the restaurant which is made out of this butterfly pea flower and apparently if I squeeze a little lime in there it'll change colour so let's see what happens. Yep, yeah, it's changing. You can see it changing from a, a blue colour to purple. Oh, 
That's quite sweet, actually. I didn't expect it to be sweet coming from a flower. Our culinary journey began with Mian Kam, which means one bite wrap, a beetle leaf filled with nuts, vegetables, and spices, finished with a sugar cane syrup and maybe a hot pepper or two. You always want to smell it first, but. Oh, wow. There's a lot of. Oh. I just bit into the spice. That's spicy. But. As the sun set, we indulged in an amazing nine course meal, and I can see why Gwyneth Paltrow calls this her favourite restaurant in the world. Wow, what a spread. Told you we'd meet again. Well, I have to say it definitely lived up to its reputation. And you know, it was really fun being a part of the whole process from this morning, going and picking out the produce to preparing it and then finally sitting down and having dinner. And Chef Benz, thank you so much. Con con crap. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I hope to see you again here. Well, I hope to be back soon. Welcome to another beautiful day here on the island of Kokud in Suniva Kiri. Now I mentioned before the reason that we're here is because these guys have such a strong ethos when it comes to sustainability and the environment and I personally wanted to find out a little more about it. And we're starting here at what they call Eco Central and also they call it the heart of the house because it's important to the operations of the resort. Hey, Arnfren, how are you? Hi, Richard, I'm good, how are you? Good to see you, man, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, so tell me, tell me about Eco Central. Eco Central is part of a heart of house. It's here we take care of our waste, and then we have a program called Waste to Wealth, where we don't look at waste as something you throw away, but actually as an asset, as a resource. So for instance, our food waste, we turn into a fertile compost that we put in the vegetable garden. From there we grow nutritious vegetables that are used in the restaurants. And by that, creating value out of what other will view as waste. Oh, fantastic. Uh, here we got our recycling corner and our composting area. Yeah, I guess it's inevitable with, with that many guests on a resort like this, you're going to have um, a lot of recyclable materials. Yeah, you do end up with uh, uh, materials that we need to take care of and, and recycle. Yeah, so plastic, glass, metal and paper. And, and this is a collection point, but where do they all go from here to be recycled? We take it to the main line where oh. we have um, facilities to recycle uh, these ma materials. That makes sense. That makes Come sense. over here. Okay. Yeah, something interesting to show you, our composting area. This composting area? Yes. So where, where, where is all this coming from? Uh, this is the organic waste, so the food waste, the garden waste, which typically count for 50% of our, our waste yep. stream. Okay. And so this we compost and turn into fertile soil yep. that we use in the vegetable garden, uh, and from there can grow vegetable that we use in the restaurants. And what you, you have to feel here is the heat from this one. Oh yeah. It's you, really, you really warm. Yeah. That's a good sign. That means the bacteria are working and, and breaking down the um, uh, food waste and the garden waste and turn that into a fertile soil. And it smells delicious. <laughs> yes, it's great. <laughs> great natural smell. Yeah. So this is where we treat our wastewater. Right, so this is a sewage treatment plant right here. Yes, yeah. this so is I, our wetland. I have to say it's aesthetically the prettiest sewage treatment plant I've ever seen. Yeah, no, this is using nature the way of, of taking care of, of um, waste, wastewater. And so we, we bring the first part of the wastewater down to that big pond there. Yeah. Then we move it up pump it up here to this pond, and here we have a plant, the water hyacinths that actually help soak up and take the, the nutrients out of the water. And through gravity, it goes to four different ponds where there are other plants, uh, and that helps treating and oxidizing the water, and you end up with uh, uh, clear water that can be then reused. This is a water treatment facility where all the drinking water is produced for the property, and I have to say, after being here for a couple of days, I have noticed that there is an abundance of drinking water everywhere, kept just as well because it is really hot and humid. Now, Arnfin, walk me through the process a little bit on how you get that drinking water quality. Well, we collect rainwater in the reservoir and then we bring the water in here. Um, we use an RO plant to treat uh, their water initially, uh, reverse osmosis that take care of all the bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, we then further go through a carbon resin uh, filter then uh, run it through UV light uh, to really sanitize it. Um, and then we add minerals. We remineralize the water with these mineral bowls. 
Um, so and then, why, why remineralize it? I, I thought the whole point was to pull minerals out of the water, no? No, when, when you have an RO, you take all, for one, you clean, clean it by killing all the bacteria, but also you remove all the minerals. Okay. That means you have a flat water. It's perfectly safe to drink, right. but when you drink it, uh, your body is actually, uh, the water extracts minerals from your body. So drinking too much of a flat water is not healthy. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and then eventually the water comes out here from try, the tap. So at this point it's ready to drink? It's drinking it can water. drink, okay. you just take okay. it off okay. the tap and you drink it. Hmm. And then we also do have the option, we have a carbonator here to add uh, sparkling. Oh. So here you can have oh, so sparkling we can have, water. So you can have sparkling water too? Absolutely. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. How does it taste? It tastes really good, but I have to ask, not to state the obvious, but you guys are obviously always using your glass bottles, so reduction in plastic that you're using, right? Yeah, there's, uh, there's a massive reduction in, in plastic uh, uh, by using the glass bottles that we can wash and use over and fantastic. over again. Great, great to hear. Despite the fact that there are 36 villas on the property, and they're pretty big, trust me, there's very little visual impact on the island. And that's in big part due to most of the building materials being used are natural products. Now, from the very beginning, one of the founders, Eva, in fact, Eva of Son Eva, was adamant that there was no unnecessary clearing, as is pretty evident with the tree growing right out of my pool. So this is a pretty typical villa. And in fact, it's home sweet home for me right now. And you can see the building materials, the wood, the glass, the bamboo, the stone. And if you look closely, each one of the support structures here is actually a telegraph pole that was reclaimed from the United Kingdom when the cables were put underground and no longer needed. It's not just about the natural materials that they're using in the buildings here. It's about the architecture and the design. And walking around the property, it all seems so seamless when in actual fact it's very well thought out and very well designed. And it's all part of their intelligent luxury philosophy. For example, a nice sea breeze instead of air conditioning. And it's all about fresh air here. They've also made good use of water features, which helps regulate the air. And on top of all that, it's just much more energy efficient. So this is nice. I'm at the weekly general manager's cocktail party. But what's really exciting about this party is this is a chance for them to showcase their zero waste policy. And basically what they're doing is creating all of these hors d'oeuvres using food that typically would go to waste. So everything on here would have typically been thrown away. So let's get an example of, of something that, that we would throw away, but now we're going to eat. What do we have here? Okay, this is a... Uh... We make for the crispy fish stick. Crispy fish stick, yes, okay. Inside is the uh, whatever fish yep. where we have. Example, like uh, you fillet the sea bass or yep. someone for make a steak, yep. uh, for make a steak, for make a main dish, beautiful dish. When you have a little bit left over, you can mix together. So this is after you fillet yes. the fish, you have yes. little bits of fish left. Yes. You put it all together. Yes. And put inside the uh, spingo. Spingo. Oh, very yes. nice. And, and then. We make deep fry like this. And we deep fry it. Yes. This is look like a spring roll, but yeah. a little bit different technique Yeah. about the roll. So who would have honestly thought that you would get something this delicious and presentable out of food that you would have typically thrown away? Well, it's been a rather busy day checking out some of the property's eco initiatives, but it's light and I need to get up early in the morning because I'm actually leaving the island. Arn Finn is taking me to check out one of the eco projects that Suniva Foundation has um, that helps eliminate the company's carbon footprint. So nighty night. Time for one last walk on the beach at Suniva Kiri before I meet up with Arn Finn, who, as it turns out, is employed as Suniva's social and environmental conscience. Wow, that's quite the title. 2% of every guest stay is donated to the Suniva Foundation, who invest this in projects that have a positive environmental, social and economic impact. And I think today, I get to see that in action. As you can see, it's another beautiful morning here in paradise. But unfortunately, all good things have to come to an end and I actually have to leave the island today, but it is for a good cause. Suniva has several community programs and Arnfin, tell me about some of those. 
We have a variety of community programs. One of them are Learn to Swim, in which we teach local children how to swim. And so that they become ocean ambassadors to really protect the environment. Uh, we also teach then uh, the adults on the island to um, be instructors so that they can continue that program on their own. Um, and then we have the forest restoration uh, program in which we have um, planted over 500,000 trees uh, covering 300 acres in northern Thailand. Yep. Um, and then we have the Myanmar Stoves campaign uh, in which I would like to take you and show. So. Oh, so we're heading to Myanmar now? We're going to Myanmar. Oh, cool. I've Let's always, go. I've always wanted to go. Let's get on that plane and head to Myanmar. Fine. Uh, yes, go. It's been quite the trek to get here, starting with a golf cart to the jetty, where we boarded a speedboat that took us to an airstrip, where we got on a private plane to Bangkok, where we boarded an international flight to Yangon, Myanmar, and then a domestic flight to here. Welcome to Mandalay. Now, the reason that we're here is because Arnfin is going to take us to a project that the Sneva Foundation has here in Myanmar, traditionally known as Burma. Now, until fairly recently, it was completely closed off. And today, the major cities are open to tourism, but there's still areas where you just can't go. And fortunately for us, the Sineva Foundation, working with Mercy Corps, an NGO and a charity, have done some paperwork for us to get there. Now, just to give you a sense of how difficult that still is, one of our producers didn't get the paperwork in time, so she has to stay at the hotel with the pool. Maybe I should have screwed up my paperwork. But I'm really looking forward to being here, seeing what it has to offer. I've always wanted to come to Myanmar. So here we are in the village of Myang Ta, which is about a two and a half hour, very interesting drive from Mandalay. Now, this village itself has about 170 households in it, which equates to about 800 people, um, which is pretty average uh, for a township. Now, the reason that we're here is because this particular village has bought about 20 stoves, and I wanted to come in here and get an idea of the difference that that's made in a village like this. You never know, I might get Arn Finn here to cook a little for us. Yeah. Let's go check it out. As I mentioned before, this is not a tourist area. Not only is it not a tourist area, but it's actually a restricted area. And we had to have uh, specific paperwork to come here and film. And I thought that was just gonna be a formality, but as it happens, while we're filming, these police officers behind me came up into the village and, and, and checked our paperwork. And not only checked our paperwork, but they took our picture too. They even went as far as to go check out the stoves to make sure um, that it was relevant for the whole reason that we were here, and to be honest, I think we might have sold three more stoves. This is the traditional method of cooking, very rudimentary. It's basically just a, a, a pit in the floor there with, with a fire burning, sticks burning a fire. Um, and this is done every day, several times a day in every household, in every village, in every township. Um, so you can imagine uh, the inefficiency of it. I mean, all of the, all of the wood that's burning is causing uh, massive deforestation. Uh, and on top of that, it's just unhealthy. I mean, I, I'm sitting here now, my eyes are watering a little bit. I'm, I'm breathing in all of this smoke. So uh, inefficient and unhealthy, right, Arnfin? Absolutely. This is a big health problem around the world. There's about uh, 4 million people uh, a year that die from uh, household cooking, wow, that's which is twice um, the amount that die from HIV AIDS and malaria combined. Wow. Uh, so it's a huge problem. So here it is, the whole reason that we're here in this village for the rather grandly named Envirofit 
M5000, or otherwise locally known as the five minute stove. So Arnfin, uh, give me a little bit of a, a little bit of a rundown on what this stove is. Well, this is built around the concept of, of a rocket. Um, so we often refer to it as a rocket stove in that it has a chamber that channels the heat and that allows you to cook on, on a higher temperature. And that higher temperature allow you to uh, use half the wood, so 50% reduction of wood. Cutting down on deforestation. Absolutely. Right. And also, uh, uh, very important, as you can see, there's hardly any smoke here. It actually reduces the, the smoke and the soth by 80%, the particle matter that they normally would breathe in. And this is a fantastic health benefit. It's incredible, incredible to me that, that, that such a simple everyday object can make such a huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. A small thing that can make a huge difference for people's health, also that uh, improve their uh, financial matter and reduce uh, deforestation. So we've seen both the health benefits and the environmental benefits of, of having this stove program, but how did it even get started, especially from someone like a, like a hotel organization? We started in 2008 with an environmental fund uh, in, with the objective of offsetting our carbon emissions. And we have done a variety of projects. We did a, a stoves project in Darfur. But we wanted something that was closer to our home base. And we are a nation-based company and we needed to find a least developing country. And, and Myanmar was the perfect fit in that. And so we then decided to set up a, a stoves program in Myanmar, hence the Myanmar Stoves campaign. Right, and has it, has it been successful? It has indeed. Uh, we have to date distributed over 14,000 stoves, helping over 65,000 people. And we have a lot, a lot of positive uh, feedback from the users. So what an incredible experience it's been, being able to come into Myanmar, a country that's just recently opened its borders. I feel very, very fortunate to be able to experience this. And I want to say a big thank you to Arn Finn and the Seneva Foundation and also Mercy Co for giving us the opportunity to come into a village like this and see the difference that a project like the Myanmar Stove Campaign can make to a community like this. <laughs> say bye, guys. Bye! bye. Thailand faces the same challenge that many developing countries face. They desperately need the tourism dollars, but they often forget about protecting the very environment that those tourist dollars bring in. It really is up to progressive organizations like Seneva to make a difference in countries like these. They really have set the bar. They have thought about every little element, even down to employing a social conscience to constantly focus on these issues. Yet, they don't force it down your throat. But if you want to get involved, then there's that option too. In fact, they run promotions such as additional free days if you participate in their eco-education programs. In summary, what an unforgettable and eye-opening experience this has been. So where does Seneva Kiri sit on our Eco Scorecard? Well, taking into account all of our criteria, I give this trip a whopping A+. And I truly believe that the Seneva organization sets the highest standard in sustainable luxury travel. Now, to get a more in-depth analysis of how I scored this trip, visit our website at leavenotrace.tv. Wow, what an incredible experience over the last few days at both Seneva Kiri and Myanmar. And talk about contrast. You know, Arn Finn pulled me aside privately and he asked me, what's the one thing that really stood out for me on this trip? And I couldn't answer it simply because I honestly felt that the sum of the whole experience was much greater than all the parts separately. But I guess if I had to pick one thing, it was Seneva's commitment and execution to the environmental and sustainability policies. These guys don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk, more than I've ever seen anywhere else. The good news is, thanks to their zero carbon emissions policies, I can get on an airplane for the next 24 hours back to the United States, and I personally will leave no trace. I'm Richard Crawford, until next time. Oh, clean, I'll clean, I'll cook. Uh, I'll sweep the beach. Don't make me go.